friends, welcome back to my channel, I'm Juliana and in today's video we are going to talk about a book called The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. This is a book that was published in 1898. Let me show you, so there you go. This is Signet Classics. This has The Turn of the Screw and other short novels. And The Turn of the Screw, the title, is like an expression that I suppose that were, was used at the time, so in uh, 1800s. Uh, oh, so this is a Victorian novel, right? This is in the era of Victoria. And Something that is noticeable in this book is that nothing is explicit and in your face. So we have many um, subtle messages or indirect um, messages like you have to infer things from what you are reading and well, uh, a lot of it I suppose because of the era that this book was written and the turn of the screw, the title, uh, I read somewhere that it was an expression that was used at the time and nowadays the expression that is equivalent is the turning point so or the last straw, I think that's how we say it. So the story begins, let me turn off this. So the story begins um, with some people telling horror stories or uh, ghost stories to each other. Um, and we have a man saying that, oh, you didn't hear any, any, anything. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story that is more horrific than any of the stories that you told and it involves two children but he uh, says that he can't tell the story right away in that night so he asks his valley his valley that we say right his employee so to go to i think his house uh, and bring like a diary, not a diary, a, a bunch of letters. Uh, well, it's, it's like one letter, it's like a text from someone that told him a story, written a written story about something that happened to her. And he's saying to the group that he will tell the story when the valley comes and brings that those papers and so a few nights later like two days uh, later he has the uh, transcripts with him and he starts telling the story so from that point on the story is told in the first person so as we know and this this is something that i already talked about i think it was in the black cat by edgar Allan poe in that video and I will link it here. We have uh, a first person uh, storytelling, so we have to be aware that it can't be trusted because the, um, the story in the first person uh, is like a version of the truth, right? So is the version of that person about what happened. So we have to be suspicious of the veracity of what they are telling us. So we realize that the story is about a woman that is a governess and she is in an interview. The story begins with her in an interview with a man that is rich and that is telling her that um, a tragedy happened in his family where a couple, I don't, I don't remember now if he was his brother or she was her si his sister. 
so I don't know from which one he was familiar with but um, a, tra a tragedy happened and a couple died in a voyage they were doing to India and uh, they uh, left two children, so a boy and a girl. He is trying to employ a governess to take care of these children in a house where he doesn't live. So the point that is uh, taking across is that he doesn't care about the children and he just wants her to go there, take care of them and don't say anything about the children to him because the uncle doesn't care and doesn't want to know anything about the children because he says he doesn't have the um, emotional or mental space to that, something like that. And so in the first encounter that they have, and I think it's the only one, it's like she's struck by a first love or something like she, she felt in love with him in a way, she is seduced by him. Well, it's not like he was trying to seduce her, but she gets seduced. So, and she goes to the house and meets Flora, that is the girl. And she is very sweet, she is very gentle, and she felt in love with her right away. And we understand that the boy, Miles, is in an intern school. But um, a few days after she arrives, she receives a letter from the intern school saying that Miles was expelled because he was corrupting the other students. But in the letter, the director of the school never explains exactly what happened and what Miles did and our governess doesn't ask about it and so Miles comes back home so he arrives I think by train she it's like she is instantly enamored by him she's so he's so beautiful and so on a few days going to pass in that house and she one day is in the garden and she looks up to a tower of the house and she, she sees in the top of that tower a man. And she's like, well, that's weird. Uh, and she goes to ask another employee, so another servant, who that man was. And in that point, the I don't think it's right away but well a few days going to pass again and she um, sees that man again and but uh, this time she sees him a bit closer and so then she going she's going to that servant again and she's going to say that she saw that man again and in this time she um, describes his um, appearance. The servant says that, well, that man worked here. And the governess responds that, oh, I thought I knew everyone that work he worked here. And the servant uh, says that, well, you did, but that man that you're describing is now dead. And so that was weird. In a day where she's with Flora in the garden, um, she the in the house there is a lake, a small lake, uh, and they are both in the garden. And the governess begins to see a woman on the other margin, uh, wearing black, uh, a black dress. And she looks at her and she finds it odd because she doesn't know her as well. And she's going to the servant saying that the, um, the girl saw it too. Of what the governess says is that the Flora was really surprised and shocked 
by what she saw, but she never said anything to the governess, so she didn't admit that she saw someone. And so the concerns of the governess starts to arise and she has the feeling that she has to protect these children, she begins to talk about writing to the uncle. And the servant says to, to her that um, she doesn't have to do that because the uncle doesn't care about the children and he doesn't want to be bothered. But the governess along the days is going to insist on that idea and she's going to say that she is seeing these people and in one of the conversations that they have, the governess insists to know the story of these two people. And so the servant begins to describe that the woman that she is describing was the last governess that the children had. And she is dead as well. So it's like she's seeing dead people, you know. And she describes that they were like a bit promiscuous. So they had a relationship that to people that the governess is seeing. They used to have a relationship. And the relationship began more um, indecent when the uncle got out of the house and went to live um, to another place. So they were there alone with each other without their um, boss. And she describes that they like kissed each other in front of the children, did stuff that they there that it it was only supposed to be happen happening at night. So something like that. So we can have an idea of what they were doing in front of the children. The, the context and the circumstances of their death is never explained. So we never get to know what happened to them. And so the governess insists on the idea to write into the uncle. And the servant is like, no, no, so I, I will write to the uncle. But the governess says to her, well, but you don't know how to write, so how are you going to write a letter? And she, sa she says she's going to the post office and she will dictate her letter to an uh, employee of the post office. And the governess is like, well, are you going to tell our story to someone strange? Are, it, are, are you going to tell our secret to a stranger? And so the servant starts to believe what, well, we suppose that she starts to believe what the governess is saying. And she um, agrees with she writing a letter to the uncle. And so she, well, in here, we don't have sure if she is trying to get the attention of that man or if the... Um, uh, idea of writing to him is a, a genuine intention you know so it, it, it is a bit ambiguous um, and so she writes the letter and then I have to say that there is here a period and this book is not long he's like 100 and something pages and I have to say that in some parts uh, in this between um, they were a bit boring, so there were this, not so much this, well, it was descriptions of what she was thinking and the things that um, she was wondering. And I think he prolonged a bit too much and it was a bit boring for me. So although this book is short, uh, I, in my opinion, it, there is this part where it's dragged a bit. So it drags the story. It's like he wanted to uh, make it a bit longer. So he put um, fillers in, in the story. At least in my opinion. I don't know if your experience was the same. Or if you enjoyed reading this. But for me there were times that I was like okay next. Like what is going to happen. I don't care about what you're saying right now. 
And so she wants the children to admit that they are seeing the ghosts. And so for what we understand, nobody, nobody except, the govern except the governess is seeing those ghosts. So we become to wonder if she is the one that is unwell. So if she is getting mad. She becomes so enveloped in this um, loop of I'm seeing ghosts, I'm seeing people that are dead, that she like, not torments, but she suffocates the children in a way. And Flora, our girl, starts to be bothered by this governess. And she admits, she says to her that she doesn't like her. And she doesn't want to be there. And she doesn't, like she hates her or something. And so she gets ill by that. And the governess suggests to the servant that she takes Flora to the uncle. So she, in a way, wants to save the children from what is happening in that house. And so she proposes that and the servant in the beginning stay, uh, uh, stays a bit um, apprehensive, uh, but she agrees and so she takes Flora to the uncle. And then she stays with Miles. In the house then she likes suffocates smile miles so she wants him to say to her what happened in the school so the reason why he was expelled and he begins to oh and um, I think there's a detail here where uh, a letter the letter that she wrote to the uncle um, uh, gets um, disappears uh, and she it starts to suspect Miles and she asks him if she uh, stole the letter and he admits that he did because Miles uh, starts uh, through more to the end of the story starts to behave a bit um, how do you say it like he's uh, cheeky in a way it's is like he's provoking and being I'm looking for an adjective to describe but I'm having trouble to find it but he's like he's like he likes to provoke the governess and he admits that he stole the letter um, because he says that he wanted to get away so he wanted the attention of the uncle and wanted to go to a boarding school, another boarding school. And she uh, pokes him like, but what happened in the school? What did you do? And he, she's like, um, he, he's like, well, I said stuff to, peep, to uh, other children that I liked. And she, and she asks, well, but that was it? We, you just st said stuff or you stole things? And he says that he didn't stole anything. He just said stuff to people. She asks him what kind of stuff he said. But Miles uh, ends up not answering. So we... To, till the end of the story, we don't, we don't um, know exactly what Miles was saying. But so an idea that um, I also saw, because I had to go research a bit about this book, because it, this is something that I'm going to say at the end of the video, but I didn't enjoy so much this story. Um, so I have a bit trouble, and I read it in English. So I, I think that complicated uh, a bit um, my uh, reading experience because um, I, I think that I didn't understand so well the nuances of this novel because 
something that um, I think I have trouble in general that is something that I want to change but I think I have trouble getting the um, how you say it the messages and the information that is not written explicitly so getting the indirect nuances of a novel I have trouble with it do you have it too or do you pick it up easily like you oh he's trying to say that he's trying to insinuate that um, oh because something that the servant says to the governess is that the man that the governess sees was really a fond of miles and not so much that miles was fond of him but that man was fond of miles and like he would go after miles and surrounding miles and wanted to play with miles and so on and so it's like um i get i got a a, a strange feeling with that like why he was so fond of him uh, because that man was like the um, uh, the valet the valet of the uncle and so I don't know exactly what he was doing after the uncle was gone and something that the servant also says is that he would steal clothes from his boss so that was something strange as well but that relationship with Miles I got a bit freaky with it I don't know exactly what what was going on there so a bit strange but well moving forward and come back in come back to uh, where what I was saying so Miles denied that he stole something in the school he just said that he said stuff to other children but he never answers what he was saying to other children but it's like well perhaps they got influenced by those two the governess and that man Quincy I don't think it's Quincy I don't remember the name but as they were promiscuous in front of the children maybe the children were influenced by that behavior and so Miles perhaps were saying stuff that he w he saw in the house so we never know right well the governess is now alone with miles in the house and well with her other servants right but uh, we don't have flora or the other uh, servant she like try she tries to get miles to admit that she's seeing those ghosts they have really indirect but it's like indirect conversations so and miles sometimes responds to her in a way that he's admitting in some way that he also saw those ghosts but we never have a response like yes i saw it we never have that something happens i don't know if i should tell you maybe i'm not going to tell you so she come she starts to um insist and insist and insist on that conversation and miles like he's like um deviating for from the the provocations that she's um she's trying to do to him and at the end of the story the story ends in a way that well something happens to miles i would i was a bit surprised by what happened and i have to go back and reread that part so i could really understand what happened and it's tragic and we become to feel that perhaps the governess was the the um, culprit of what happened to miles uh, and that she suffocated that boy so much that um, that happened to him and and the story ends there so we don't 
we don't go back to the um, uh, the beginning of the story where the group was telling horror stories so we don't come back to that the story ends with the ending of the story of the governess and so telling more uh, a bit about my reading experience so i have to say that i didn't enjoy this book i thought in i don't know 50 percent of the book that it was boring it had some parts that I wanted to know what what would happen so she was seeing ghosts and well what is going to happen and so come on um, and that didn't happen so it, it has a lot of fillers in my opinion it has a lot of fillers in the middle of the story you know I think that I didn't completely understand the full nuances of this story i think i missed well a lot of information that was subtly nuanced in the um, in the words so i suppose that maybe in the future i can reread this story to see if i really understood and perhaps maybe uh, i should have read this in portuguese but well i'm trying to develop my english so that's why i'm trying to read more books in english but well i suppose that till i have a more elevated level of english i will miss some stuff in uh, some books so i can help it but maybe i have to read both Portuguese and English so I can have a full comprehension or a more facilitated comprehension of the story but yeah I thought that the story was a bit slow a bit boring with fillers I was in the middle of it saying why this doesn't end like I'm sick of it so yeah that was my reading experience I'm I'm curious if you have read it so this story is really well known it's a classic and it's old as you could see so this is from 1898 um, and I suppose that most of you have read it or at least have heard about it so if you if you did if you have read it please let me know what you thought how was like your reading experience if you enjoyed the, the story or if like me you didn't enjoy so much so please let me know uh, your thoughts and I think I'm going to stay here I didn't want to do spoilers in this video so um, I think I did a good job in that I hope I didn't deliver anything but let me know if you are suspicious about something but yeah so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications leave a like it helps a lot to the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel follow me on instagram i'll be posting there whenever i have a book review to do or anything else and that's it i hope you have enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one bye